first that uh, there was a systematic absence of an awareness of the mother, which is not to say she isn't there. I mean, she's there in the shadows and the interstices. She's there all over the place, but she's never sort of brought out onto the stage. Uh, and this is especially true in his case studies. Uh, the mother of the patients uh, the, that he presents uh, is just sort of standing in the wings, just uh, asking to be brought out, and he never does it. So uh, first uh, was to recognize and sort of map out the systematic absence, and then to um, try and analyze what the consequences were, both for his character and then for his thinking and his theorizing. And in doing that, uh, it became possible to explain a lot of the shortcomings in his thinking, and many of the things he's uh, commonly criticized for, and to explain their origins. Uh, most notably, some of his very, uh, almost embarrassing uh, attitudes about femininity, female psychology, uh, female sexuality. And also to um, uh, criticize, uh, critique, uh, his theory of religion and culture, which was, which is avowedly patriarchal and masculinist. Uh, but it wasn't only that with this new perspective one could critique him, one could also start to discover uh, elements within his thinking that you could start to correct the mistakes he had made. I mean, Freud was a man who sort of stood in two worlds. He had one foot in the 19th century and one foot in the 20th, 21st even. And at the same time as he had a lot of uh, patriarchal, misogynist biases, uh, there was another side of him that was extremely progressive. And uh, I would even argue that uh, many of the progressive movements that, that, uh, that emerged in the 20th century, like feminism, like gay and lesbian liberation, like the sexual revolution, uh, he laid the groundwork for them. It was, uh, it was the, uh, the processes that he put into motion that originally unfolded. So in studying Freud, you could both, uh, uh, with, this, with this perspective about the missing mother, uh, you could both really delineate the uh, limitations of his thinking, but you could also see that there were tremendous resources in his thinking that we could use to correct him and go beyond him. That's one of the reasons I think he's so, so relevant today. I mean, one commentator called him an ambivalent uh, critic of patriarchy. So on the one hand, he, in his personality and his sensibility and in his explicit writings, was quite patriarchal. But there's another side to him, which is actually very progressive and, uh, and anti-patriarchal, you might say feminist. And uh, what I tried to do was to use this one side to criticize the more reactionary side of Freud. I think the critique of misogyny and patriarchy and sexism are still uh, on the top of our cultural agenda issues about gender, sexuality, identity, and so on. And while Freud ha is often uh, dismissed as reactionary, as another dead white male, uh, I would say that's not true. And in fact, while he has these reactionary tendencies in him, the resources he gave us to address these questions are still very powerful. And we can use those resources to advance the progressive struggles against patriarchy and misogyny and gender inequality and sexual inequality and so on.